What if you could have an API for your existing database without writing a single line of code? Let's discover Yana, a no-code API wrapper that exposes a REST API for MySQL, Postgre, SQL Server and MongoDB within minutes. In addition, it also provides you the documentation and allows you to react to your data changes with WebSockets or webhooks. Before exploring Yana, let's see the different options to start using it. You can self-deploy it by following their Docker installation guide, or you can use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy the self hosted version on your server or the cloud provider of your choice, while we take care of the installation, backups, updates and maintenance for you. To start using YANA on our platform, head to ls.io and click on login. Then deploy my first service, search for YANA, click on select, choose between the different cloud providers or the last option if you want to use your own server. Choose the region, service plan, and then click on the next button. Adjust the final settings. Choose between the different level of support. I will keep the free included one. And once you are ready, hit the create service. Once the installation is finished, you will receive this email with two headlines. You have accessing the API server and accessing PHP my admin UI. Let's click on click here to get the password. You will arrive on the administration panel of your YANA instance and you will be able to get both of your credentials by clicking on display YANA API or PHP my admin. Before explaining you why we have PHP my admin, first I will open YANA API, our instance. So I copy the password in my clipboard and I access the instance by following this link. We arrive on the documentation page, which is what YANA generate for the API it generates automatically for our database. Because it is in the database, we didn't need to enter our credentials yet, but we will need them later when we will perform API calls. You can see on the left, we have authentication, which is by default with YANA, but then we have other tables, category, customer, employee that are coming from our database. And the database is the one that you can find in PHP MyAdmin UI. Click here, copy in the password to your clipboard and open the link. Type root and paste the password. You should be familiar with this screen, which is PHP MyAdmin. On the left, you can see we have different collections. So the MySQL shows us we are in a MySQL database. Let's expand YANA. And these are the tables that are used inside our YANA API to generate a lot of endpoints. This is what comes by default when you create an instance. So of course, if you don't want to create another database and you want to use this MySQL database, you can remove the tables and start from here. It's already pre-configured to work with YANA. But if you have an existing database, you want to wrap YANA around, or if you want to use something else than MySQL, you will need to adjust the configuration. So head to the documentation and you can see that it's environment variable you need to define to say where is the database and what are the variables to define to give access to YANA to your database. It's very simple. You just need to update your environment variables. So back to LSTO administration dashboard, click on update config. You have the Docker compose. You can ignore it, but it display you what it used to assign a database URI variable. So we kept the same name and then you can in the environment, adjust the different variables. So currently, database URI, we are using the local one, but you just have to replace this string with the URL. Well, in that case, it's the connection string to your database. By doing that, you're good to go and you're using another database. Now we know that, let's try one of the different endpoints. Because the endpoints are secure, we will need to authenticate ourselves. We'll start the login one. It requires a username and a password, and it's a post request on slash os slash login. So I copy the URL. You can use whatever you like. I'm using Insomnia, but use Postman or directly your backend or curl. Let's create our endpoint. Create new HTTP request. This URL, it's a post request. I could use environment variable for the base URL, but I will keep it simple. Then we need to pass the variable, go to body. Then it's JSON. Here you have the documentation. You have a copy button, click on it, paste 
the content and replace the variable. So username is my email address. And for the password, we need to go back to LSTO, YANA API and copy the password that is here. And then we can paste it. No worries, it's, a, it's an instance I will delete later. And now let's try this endpoint, send. And we have status code OK with our access token. We will need it for the other API call. So let's copy it to our clipboard. If you are building a software around it, you just need to save it somewhere in your code. Let's rename it to remember it's our login. Login and let's create a second API call because I won't be able to copy paste anything if I lose my token. Let's go to auth. I think it's bearer token and paste it. We have tested the login, but we only had that main user. So let's say we want to create other user, go to user, create user, and we have another endpoint with more variables we can use. Again, expand here, copy the URL, go here, it's a post, and let's put the body JSON. We will copy everything, but you can see a few parameters are not required. So we'll maybe only add the role. Let's do it. Email, I will use another email address. Password, I will add a password. And the role, you can see you can pass admin, user or super admin. So let's use user. And the rest, we will keep it empty. Let's try it. Perfect. We got 201 created and we have our new user. If we try to call it again, we have an error because the record already exists. What we can do too is to change our authentication token. Let's add a Z at the beginning. And we have an authorized because the authentication failed. This is a setting you can adjust if you don't want to require authentication for your API route. This is what is written here in the documentation. You will need to add environment variable skip auth and set it to true. It depends on what you are building. You might need it or not. Perfect. Let's rename it. Create user. Let's check our original database. If we go to user, now we can see we have my main user and the new user we created and the password. Of course, they are encrypted. You have the role. I defined it to user and we don't have first name, last name because I didn't set them. We have tried a post request. Now let's try to get the list of products. So we have that table containing all those data. On the left product, you can see you can create list, get one product, update one product, delete a product or even get the schema information for this table. So this is the painful crud you do when you develop a backend that is automatically generated based on your database. We'll see later how to create our table, but now let's use the demo one. So list products, and it's not doing a select everything without any parameters. Inside you can define relations. If your table have relations, you can add some pagination, limit offset, sort the data, filter some products based on the name, the ID and any column. All right, let's try it. Here it's a get request, copy the endpoint. Let's create another route. Of course, if you are really creating your insomnia for a real project, create folders like you have in the documentation based on product users. Let's name it directly list products. It's a get request here. If we try it out of the box, we will have the unauthorized. In authentication, go to bearer. Let's get our token from the other one. And let's try it. Here we are, we have some data explaining us the limit currently applied, so 20. The offset, we are starting at the first index. The total number, so we are able just with that to create a pagination. But you can also create a real pagination using IDs, depending on if you want to use offsets or pagination. And then the most interesting part, in data you have the array of all your rows. Currently we didn't apply any parameters, so we get everything. Well, the first 20. You can see on the documentation on the left what you can do on it. So let's try, for example, the sort. 
So it's sort, you need to pass the column dot the direction and you can add multiple sort. Because it is a get request, we'll use query string parameters. Add one, well, we already had one, an empty one. So it's sort. What column do we have? We can use product name. And it was dot, let's say desk. So in descending order, let's try it. And now we can see we have product Z because it's the last letter, then Y and so on. Then if we want to manually create our pagination, we could use the offset. Let's add an offset of five. So it should skip the five first entries based on our sort. And here it is, it starts at X. And in offset here, we see we offset it five rows. Let's say we want to fetch less data. We can add limit and only 10. And this is how you interact with your database. You don't have to write the queries or your ORM to recode this every time. Okay, so far we have used the demo data. What interests you the most is to use your existing database. Let's try it. I won't create a new database instance, but I will create a new table and show you how it automatically generates the API for it. So our table, let's name it open source. I will add an ID. We need it to be auto increment. So it will be the primary key. And then we can just use name. It will be a string. Let's set a max length of 500. And okay, it's enough for this demo. Save it. We arrive on the structure. If we go to browse, it will be empty. So first let's insert some data. The ID, it will set it automatically. Then we can add some open source software. For example, Yana that we are testing right now. And the last platform overview, if you haven't watched it, is SFTP Go. If I do Go, it will create only this row. So let's do both here. It shows us the request it executed and it created two rows. We can see them in the rows here, perfect. Now, if we go back to Yana, if we reload, it won't be there automatically because it's not scanning 24 seven your database and it's best for the performance. So we just need to do something simple. Click on the restart button. It will restart your app stack. Now it's stopping the existing containers and it's starting them again. It's done, it shouldn't take long, maybe less than a minute. Okay, let's reload it and on the left, now we have open source and like we had for the product we have create list get update and delete let's say we want to create one new row in our database we just need to authenticate and to add the name variable so let's copy it let's add a new endpoint http request paste it it's a post request Let's name it create open source. I will regret the environment variable. So in auth bearer, we'll use the same. If we try it right now, we'll have an error because we didn't pass any data. Let's go to body, JSON, copy the JSON payload, paste it, enter the name of the open source software, Funk Whale. And I know a lot of you didn't watch the platform overview, but before creating it, let's test another feature. Maybe you will need to perform actions when data change or is requested. That's why you can use webhooks. To use it, it's pretty simple. You just have to add in the YANA webhook table some data so it will know that when some actions occurs on some tables, it will perform your webhook. Let's go back to our database. We have the YANA tables here and the webhook. Currently, we don't have any, so let's insert one. What we need is the type. So on what kind of request you perform the webhook. So for us, we will create one. So it will be the post, the URL of our webhook. We will be using webhook.site to get a webhook URL. We copy it and we paste it in the URL and then the table name we want to listen events on. So open source. 
Then we have additional parameters explained in the documentation, such as user identifier and so on. By the way, I told you something wrong. So you need to check on create, on update, on delete to call the webhook. And the type is the type of request it will do to your webhook. But OK, we will keep it as a post request. And then we need to be sure that on create at least is set to one. Should be good, we can create our webhook. One row inserted, perf perfect. Be sure to restart your server so it will monitor the webhooks. Perfect, now we can try it. Go back to Insomnia, everything was ready. We can send our requests. We see it successfully created a new row in our database. And in our database, there is another table, YANA webhook log where we can see that it attempted to do the webhook, but for whatever reason, it failed. But it tried twice, but never it could success. But this is another topic why it failed. So you can monitor for data change using the webhook, and you can also monitor them using WebSockets. Like you did for webhooks, you can subscribe for insert, update, or delete. In the documentation, you have sample code if you want to try it and you have other information to use YANA based on your needs. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering YANA with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, watch this video available here.